happy Mother's Day. As I've prayed and sought God on what to speak on, and I thought, you know, I need to preach something for mothers. And this really isn't, but then I thought, yeah, God said, yes, it is, because there is nothing more than what I'm about to preach on that we can do and develop and mature in our life that would make us the most awesome mothers and fathers when we do this and practice this. So. But in honor of Mother's Day, I found a cute little video I think you guys would enjoy. So if you guys have that ready, we'll watch this first. Moms are a big help when you lose something, aren't they? Your mom is just not a help at all. Hey, mom, I can't find my wallet. Well, it's got to be somewhere. It's like, that's good. I thought I was going crazy for a minute. I thought I was looking for something that didn't exist. Thank you. Mom is the worst nurse in the world. Some women, the parents and mothers, they just don't. You do the same thing. No matter what's wrong with the kid, you tell them to do the same thing. Especially women in the South, when I was my mom's kid. I'm like, Mom, I don't feel good. You need to go sit on the pot. <laughs> you need to sit on the, yeah. It's ancient wisdom that only I can conceive. Go sit on the pot, you'll feel fantastic, I'm telling you. I think I broke my leg. You need to go sit on the pot. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm trusting you. It's still kind of throbbing. Marcus Welby. I don't think this is it. I can see her at my funeral. I told him to sit in the pot. I told him. And everybody in this, this room has gotten this when you're driving away from a parent. Drive careful! <laughs> Duh. What are they going to say? Drive fast and take chances. <laughs> Cut people off, sweet pea. Use your road rage if you have to. I couldn't resist. I thought that was too cute. He has several. You guys need to look them up. But anyway. But I want to talk to you this morning. I want to ask you, does anybody ever remember the game? I think it was get in a game, a book. Um, first, if y'all got the image ready, y'all look at it and tell me if you recognize this and know who this is. Where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Everybody knows who that is, right? All right, well, let's pray this morning. Lord, I thank you for this day, God. I thank you for the gift of life, God. I thank you, Lord, that you are here, God, and that we are in your presence, Lord. Lord, I love you, and I praise your name, and I ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, God, Lord, Lord, just to speak. Lord, just to shine your presence, your glory, Lord, down upon us, Lord. Lord, I, I am a vessel here this morning, Lord, and I, God, give myself completely over to you and to the Holy Spirit to have your will and your way through me, God. May the words that I speak, God, your word says your word does not return void. It is not my word, God, but it is your word, God. And Lord, your word, God, has the power to save, to set the captive free, to heal, God, to deliver, God, Lord, to save those that are lost, God. And we just right now, call upon that name, upon the word, God, upon the name of Jesus, God. And we just ask that your power and your anointing, God, just cover us here this morning. May the blood of Jesus cover us, God, like never before, God. May we open our hearts, God. May we be receptive, God, to receive, God, everything that you have for us to receive this morning, God. I pray and I ask you, God, including myself, that we will not walk out those doors the same way we walked in, God, but we will walk out, God, more anointed, God, Lord, more on fire for you, God, Lord, more in love with you, God, hunger and thirsting after you, God, like never before, God. We thank you, God, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so where's Waldo, right? Everybody recognize Waldo. All right, let's look at the next image. Where is Waldo? Can anybody pick out Waldo? Anybody have any luck? It's pretty hard, isn't it? Take some time to search and look. Amen? Amen? Do you ever wonder if God is saying, where's holiness? Where's holiness in my people? Where's holiness in my church, 
in my creation? Where's the holiness? You see, 1 Corinthians 6.20 says this, For you were bought at a price. You did not come cheap. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your sight, which are God's. Again, you are not cheap. Don't ever, ever let anybody devalue and make you feel that you are cheap and worthless. Because this is not my word. This is God's word. You were bought with a price. You are a very expensive, precious gift. Amen? Holiness, let's look at this. It means, holy means to be set apart by God or for God. Holy means sacred. Is anything sacred? I, I've asked this before. Is there anything sacred anymore these days? Uh, in the Greek, I think I'm saying this right, hegias, I'm not sure. Uh, it means properly different, unlike other. Likeness, listen, likeness of nature with the Lord because we are different from the world. Amen? Yeah, amen. Ephesians 23 and 24 says this, Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. I hear people all the time, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I can't be holy. I can't do this. I can't do this. Well, then that goes against this word because I believe it said that we were created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Where's holiness today? Listen, in today's society, it's growing harder and harder and harder to tell the difference between the church and the world. And this saddens my heart, and I know it must sadden and break God's heart. Listen, the compromises that we have made, Christians included, self included, I stand up here today, and I tell you, I, this word preaches to me. I, I have not always done things perfect and right. Thank God I have a God that's loving and forgiving. Amen? But listen, we have made compromises with the world. You know what it's done? It has eroded our holiness. And it continues. The more compromise, you know, there was a song out, A Slow Fade. If Satan just walked up to us and wanted us just to do some terrible murder or something... No, we wouldn't, but it's a slow fade. It's these small compromises that we think, oh, it don't really matter. Oh, that's not going to hurt nobody. Oh, nobody will know. Oh, it's not a big deal. Yes, it is. It's eroding our holiness away. Listen, we can't fill our lives with worldly things and expect to live holy lives. You can't do it. You can't straddle the fence. You have to choose this day who you will serve. Proverbs 14, 12 says this, There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. You may think you're on the right path, and you may think you're okay, but get in the mirror. Ask God. Deep down, I think everybody knows if they're really okay with God or not. There was another song, what if we wake up one day and realize we're living life upside down? You think you're okay. You think you're on the right path. When you're so far from God, it's not even funny. Amen? Look at the priest in the Old Testament. They would have died if they went to the Holy of Holies with sin in their lives. Yet we walk into God's house. And we are God's temple. Not just walking into his house, but we are his temple. And we walk around every day. And again, we come together as a church body with bringing things that are so unholy. And we think, well, who knows? Though it doesn't matter. God knows. God knows. Amen? Listen, how do we think we can hold on to our sin and still be ready to go to heaven? Yes, we, we sin. No, yes, yes, I understand that. And we, but I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about. There's sin in your life and you know it's there and you continue to practice it day after day after day. And yet it's just, oh well, oh well. Leviticus 20:26 20, says this. You sh maybe try to be holy. If it's a good day for you, be holy. If things are going the way you want it, be holy. 
If circumstances in your life are perfect, be holy. No, it says you must be holy because I, the Lord, am holy. I have set you apart from all other people to be my very own. Amen? Leviticus 44, just the first part says, For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore consecrate. That means set apart yourself. And you shall be holy. It's time we set ourselves apart. Does that mean we don't get around people that are lost? No. No. But we shouldn't be joining in and practicing the things they're doing. There should be a difference. Amen? Amen. Is God holy? Yes. So everybody agrees. God is holy. Do you think God is separated from sin? Or do you think God one day is holy and the next day he's practicing sin? Do you think when we're all acting right and doing what he wants to do as his children, he's happy and he's holy? But then when we mess up, that just... He falls apart and starts sinning, starts doubting, starts questioning, wondering why he made us. Do you think God does that? No. If God told you to be holy like he is holy, do you think it's possible? Yes. yes. Even you and you and you and you and me. Get it out of your head. Well, that's not me. I can't do that. I got to get Yes, even you can be holy. Stop with the excuses. Enough's enough. Game's over. It's time to choose. Again, I tell you, choose this day who you will serve. Stop being lazy. Stop having apathy. Stop only caring about you and yourself and what you want and your problems. Amen? Choose this day who you will serve. We can't choose. We can't do both. For some reason today, we think we can get away with not being holy. 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16 says this. So think clearly and exercise self-control. Look forward to the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So, listen. You must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do. Just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, again, you must be holy because I am holy. So I bet really God meant holiness really is just for pastors. What y'all think? Surely he wouldn't expect us. No? I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I got this one. Evangelist. That's, that's who God meant to be holy. Pastors and evangelists. We're just like normal folks. He expects us to be holy? No, 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 I know. Missionaries. Pastors, evangelists, and missionaries. That's who God meant. To, that's who he's talking about in all this, right? No? You mean every born-again believer in Jesus Christ should be holy? Hmm, that's a concept there. Listen, true holiness begins where? On the inside. You know, I know there's different, there's holiness and there's different church, and there's different ways. People think you got, it's a hairstyle or a certain way you dress. And I think, yes, you should honor your body with how you dress and act and all that on the outside. But it starts on the inside. It starts in our thoughts. What are you thinking? What is consuming your thoughts during the day that's going to form your attitudes? Your stinking thinking is going to form your ugly attitudes and behavior. Amen? And then our values. What do we value? What is so important to us that we'll spend our time, our energy, our money? What, is, what, what are those things that we value? And our motives. Why do we do the things we do? Even when we preach or teach or sing, why do we do these things? Something to think about. You see, the innermost parts of our hearts that only God can see. Think about that. We all have those innermost parts of our heart that only God can see. But guess what? He sees. I may not see it. You may not see it. Your spouse may not see it. 
The preacher may not see it, but the one who truly matters, he sees it. Amen? The above five things are what make up our lifestyle to walk in holiness or not to walk in holiness. And then there are ways that we also operate in holiness. The way we work on the job or at home or working here at church or, you know, do you work in excellence? Do you do, you do it with a glad heart? Do you do it fussing and complaining? You know, every, the Bible says everything we should do, we do, we do it as you're doing it unto the Lord because really you are. It wouldn't say that if we wasn't. You may have a boss. But God allowed you that job, so do everything you do as you're, as you're doing it to the Lord. What about the way we use our time? Do we spend more time, and I can say, ouch, I've been guilty, on Facebook than we do studying God's Word? Do we spend more time with our sports and our hobbies and, and all these things than we do in God's Word? Moms, do we spend more time cleaning our house and making sure everything's so-so and our kids are so-so and all this than we do in the Word of God? Dads, do we spend more time trying to make more money than we do sharing with our families the Word of God? What about the way we use uh, treat others? That speaks volume of how we treat others, how we stand in here and lift holy hands and praise and sing honor to God and then bash others, criticize others, maybe because they don't do something like we would do it or... Amen? What about the way we use our money? Yeah. You know, it all is a gift from God. Are we good stewards of that? Do we spend, 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 and then scrape up enough to give our tithes to God? Or maybe we don't even have enough to give our tithes to God because we've spent so much on other things. Amen? What about our leisure habits? Do they honor God? Can we honor God in those? Our entertainment choices, the things we do for fun, the way we submit to those God put over us, and the way we give ourselves to our marriage. All of these and more should be seen and evident in our everyday lives. If not, then guess what? There's a problem. We need to get in the mirror. We need to reevaluate and ask God, hey, what's going on in my life? When you look, God, for holiness, how far do you have to look? I want him to be able to just right here. How about you? When he looks at this church, how hard does he have to search for holiness? Amen? You know, we talk about modern-day holiness. Today, the word holiness carries almost a negative, judgmental tone to it. Amen? To be holy now is to be considered a nerd, weird, out of touch. Amen? It's no longer thought of a virtue, but rather a vice. Even in the modern church, again, it's becoming rare and hard to find. So what are we teaching our children? What are we teaching the next generation? Guys, if we don't pull this together and get God's holiness a priority in our lives, it concerns me about my children having children. It really does. This, again, it's not a game. It's not a game. Game's over. It's time to get serious. It's time to wake up. Amen? Amen. We've allowed the world to desensitize us to sin. We have allowed this in our homes, in our lives. We have allowed this through TV, through movies, through video games, through media, through music. We pay to go watch sin. I've been guilty. Amen? But yet we can't pay to go watch a Christian. We'll fuss at the Christian concerts or something about the money. But yet we'll pay to watch filth and trash. Amen? We've, we've dulled down like these movies, these uh, values of, that they're making. And we think, oh, that can't be. Nice. I mean, the things I've heard Christians say about these movies is sad. Amen? 
Matthew 7, 13 through 14 says this. And y'all ain't got to worry about me going too long because my feet are killing me in these shoes. <laughs> uh, Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. Pay attention to this, guys. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. You know, with what all is going in the world today, and I think, oh, my gosh. And then people that, and I, I, you, I have to be so careful here because I don't want to be caught myself walking in judgment. But the things that God's word plainly calls out is sin. And then we've got people, Christians, and trying to make excuses and say it's okay. You know, and I think, what is going on, God? Then this explains it. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many will enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only few find it. I think that the enemy has placed so many distractions out there through all these things I've called off, through all this stuff, and we're falling for it. He's, he, he's baiting, uh, baiting the hook, and we're, we're, we're taking the bait. We're taking the bait. We are called to perfection. And now we've said we're, we're not perfect, but there is scripture that says we are called to perfection. Did you, did you, do y'all know that? <laughs> Which perfection, I think, it, it means maturity. Which is going to equal holiness. See, are we always going to get things right? No. But we're going to be quick to recognize that. We're going to be quick to make that right and, and drop to our knees and ask God's forgiveness and, and to mature where we don't do that again, where we're becoming more and more holy like God. Amen? Amen. You see, there should be a huge distinction between someone who is, has accepted Jesus and someone who hasn't. But there's not much distinction these days. What is wrong? Why? This doesn't mean, again, that we'll never make a mistake. It does, however, mean that we mature and find His holiness and stop making the same mistakes over and over and over again. Amen? First Peter 2, 9 through 10 says this, But you are the ones chosen by God. God has chosen you. Chosen for what? The high calling of a priestly work. Well, not me. I can't talk about God. Why? He's chose you. Amen? Chosen to be a holy people. Well, not me. God's instrument to do his work and speak out for him. To tell others of the, listen, night and day difference he's made for you. Has God made a night and day difference in your life? What are you telling people? Are you telling people that? Are you telling them about all your troubles and all your whining and all your yin-yang? God ain't done this and this person did that. What are we saying to people? It says to tell them the, the, the night and day difference that he made in our lives. Amen. Listen, from nothing to something. Amen. From rejected to accepted. Amen. We must learn to live this out in our everyday lives. Guys. It's time to get real. It's time that we, we have got to learn to crucify our flesh. We have got to learn to crucify our feelings. I was listening to a man the other day. What was it? I cannot remember. But anyway, he's talking about, he was an older gentleman. And he was talking about, and, and when he was young, how if he was in the neighborhood and everybody was saying, that's what he's saying. It was so different when he grew up that they could go, oh, it was at that funeral, I think. This guy's like, that is so true. You know, they all went playing and all this. And, and it was safe to do that back in those days. And that if he done something and one of the other parents or neighbors or whatever could just grab him up and correct him, spank his little bottom, whatever, yeah. Yeah. and then go home and guess what? His parents didn't call that parent and jump on him. His parents wore him out for getting in trouble. Same with school. We always told our kids, if you get a panel at school, you get in trouble School, you better be ready when you get home because you're going to get it at home. I can remember one day I went to pick Kayla up, and she was kindergarten, and 
Kayla was always this bubbly, happy girl, you know, just, and I'm, this lady's talking to me, then we would walk up and get our kids, and she's like, let's go mama, let's go mama, let's go mama, I'm like, what is wrong, I mean, she was just ready to get out of there, and I could tell something was wrong, well, she had done some little something, had her bear move, she was terrified, because she knew she was going to get in trouble when she got home, because she got in trouble at school, but I mean, Nowadays, you correct someone else's child, and woo, you better watch out. Amen? Amen? We have got to crucify our flesh. We, it says, you know, what's that saying? It takes a village to raise children. Now, you do it in love. You don't go and be hateful, but you do things in love. Amen? We've got to look out for one another. We've got to encourage one another. We've got to be able to take correction. Amen? The reason I think our kids can't take correction is because we adults can't take correction. You let somebody come at us with holy correction, and and what? What? Who do you think you are? And you might not not say it right there to them, but, buddy, I bet when they're gone, you're around other people, you're going to be blasting them. You know, I think there's a word in here that talks about that wise people receive that and fools reject it. Amen? We better learn how to take some holy correction. Amen? We've got to crucify our flesh. We've got to crucify our selfish ways. Everything is not about us. Amen? We have got to, got to, got to, got to personal, our personal agenda. It's got to be gone. Of always about our wants and our desires. And then, oh, Control our minds, our mouths, and our attitudes. Amen? Amen. Again, our thoughts. That's where it all begins. The enemy putting thoughts right here in our mind. And then we harbor that. And, 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 And then we start having our feelings and our emotions and all that. And then our attitudes. And then it starts coming out of our mouths. Amen? Listen, here's what we need to do. We need to bring all these things into the obedience of Christ immediately. Don't wait. Don't take time to ponder it immediately bring that into the obedience of Christ. Amen? 1 John 3, 6 through 10 says this, Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin. But anyone who keeps on sinning does not, this is strong, know him or understand who he is. Do you know him this morning? Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous. This is so simple. Even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to who? The devil, who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not, do not, everybody got to everybody say, do not, do not, make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. So now we call, we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. That's simple. That is strong, and that is simple, but that is truth. Amen? Amen. 2 Corinthians 7, 1 says this, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us, what? Cleanse ourselves. Crucify that flesh. Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And that's the problem. There's no fear of God anymore. And maybe it's because us as parents are not placing that, teaching that to our children, as in there's no respect or fear of us, for them to us and to others. And so how are they going to honor or fear or respect God when we're not teaching them that? Amen? Where's the fear of God today? Hebrews twelve fourteen says this, Work at living in peace with everyone, and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 says this, Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Again, this isn't a game. Don't fool yourself. Those who indulge in sexual sin or worship idols 
What are you worshiping? We don't have statues built, but we have things that we place ahead of God every day in our lives. Again, it goes back to what are you spending your time, your energy, your finances. If you'll look, you can pick out your idols in your life. It's easy to do that. Amen? Amen. Or who worship idols or commit adultery or male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or thieves or greedy people or drunkards or abusive or cheap people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. But listen to this. Some of you were once like that. Amen? But you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. Yes, we may have been like that. We may have done these things. But thank God for His mercy and His grace. Thank God that He forgives. Amen. And that we can call on Him. And He will cleanse us. And again, He will set us apart and make us holy. Not for ourselves, but for Him and for others. To see His holiness through you. What do others see when they look at you? Amen? Are they seeing holiness or unholiness? Are they seeing God or ungodly? What do they see when they hear us talk? Our speech. What are we representing? Who are we representing? Amen? Amen. Romans, 12, Romans 1, 28 through 32 says this. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God. <laughs> that sounds about right for the, today, doesn't it? He abandoned them to their foolish thinking. And let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They vent new ways of sinning, and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand Break their promises. How much of that do we see going on today? Can we take anybody at their word today? If we commit to do something, are we going to stay committed to it? Or when the newness and the fun wears off, we're going to just let it slide like it's not important? That we didn't commit and say we'd be there to do that? Yeah. Amen? Where was I? They refuse to understand, break their promises are heartless and have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die. Here's where we're at in the church today. This, I'm talking in the church, I believe. This is where a lot of us are at. Yet, they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. We know the things we do are wrong. We know the things we do are unholy. We know this. But yet we continue to do them. And not only that, we encourage others to do them too. Ouch. Ouch, ouch. Where are we at today, church? Where are we at? Can we come into church, honor God, respect God, respect the others around us? It's hard. I mean, you know, it's... I'm not even going to go there, but... I'm just saying we can give our time and we can to a lot of things, but it seems like today it's hard to find people that will give their time to God. It's, he's on the back burner. Amen? Amen? I've got some questions. We're about to wind down here. Don't y'all just love me? <laughs> Is there any hypocrisy in our lives? Hmm? Are we certain that what's on the outside is the same as what's on the inside? Can you say that today? What's on the outside? What I present on the outside is the same as what's in the inside. Amen? Do we outwardly appear to be holy, but inwardly harbor thoughts and attitudes or values that are unholy? Are we concerned how we appear to God? Are we as concerned how we appear to God? 
as we are about how we appear to others. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it does matter what others think, don't get me wrong, because we want to shine God's light, and we don't want to do anything to blemish God or his reputation. But when we're worried, this is talking about when we're worried about, well, what's so-and-so going to think if, you know, or what if I don't have this, or what if I have, you know, stuff that don't matter. We shouldn't care what others think, amen? amen? We shouldn't care if we've been in church and we already, all of our lives, and we're already supposed to know God. We're already supposed to, we shouldn't care. If God convicts our hearts and asks us to hit the altar, we shouldn't be ashamed. We ought to be able to lay that pride down and hit the altar. We ought to care more about what God thinks and what God says than what anyone around us thinks. Amen? Amen. Do we have our eyes, our hearts, and our minds set on eternity or on things of the world? Listen, how much thought, attention, and effort do we devote to pursuing holiness? Think about that. How much thought, attention, and effort do we devote? See, it's going to take some effort. And it's going to take some time. But we've got plenty of time for everything else. We've got time. I'm guilty. I'm not sitting here in judgment seat. I promise you. Again, what matters most? You know, and I know, in our lives, we can look and tell in our own lives. Are we intentionally intentional about putting away everything that is displeasing to God? Again, when something's in your life and it comes up, are you right on it? I know this would not bring honor and glory to God. Let me do away with it. Amen? Anything that comes around you or in your home or anybody you're around, if it's, uh, not, dis- if it's not pleasing to God, get away. Amen? Do away with it. How important is the holiness of our children? Here's where it hits home today, guys. How important is the holiness of our children? Are we more concerned with their grade point average, their batting average, or the future earning capacity as we are about, listen, the purity of their heart and their life? Do we spend more time getting them, finding things to get them involved in, godly things, or do we spend more time trying to take them to Six Flags and op- wherever, ain't no Opry Land, no Opry Mills, and to the beach and making sure they got the latest, greatest clothes and shoes and devices? I'm not against these things. I, my kids have these things, but still, there's a yearning in my heart. There's something wrong. We're turning away from God. Our kids are turning away from God faster at a faster rate than ever before. And I'm not saying these things are bad, but I'm saying when we allow these things in our kids and we're not even paying attention to what they're downloading, I'm telling you, kids are sending texts at young age. Don't be fooled. You think you're a third or fourth or fifth grader. Ain't hey, saying these things, you're wrong. It's there. It's available. Their friends at school have it. We need to be on our hands and knees praying and pouring into our kids. Oh, like never before. I'm telling you, it makes me sick to my stomach. Like right now, I could vomit to think about the things that our kids are facing these days. Amen? Does the sin of ourselves... Or our loved ones drive us to our knees? Does the sin in our own life or the lives of our loved ones grieve us? Are you grieved by it? Or are we content to close our eyes rather than confronting it? Hoping it will go away or laughing it off or, well, everybody's doing it. There's got to be a difference, folks. There's got to be a difference. There's got to be a difference. If we're going to make a difference in the world today, because I'm telling you, Christ is coming. And Christ is coming soon. And we need, they need, these people need to be able to look to us and see a difference. 
there needs to be a draw because you know what? When God, and it's not us that they're drawn to, but it's the spirit that's within us. It needs to be a sweetness and a wrong, I mean, but yet we need to be able in boldness speak the truth and love to them. Amen? The church has long been awaiting for the world to get right with God. Would everybody agree with that? But guess what? When will we all realize the world is waiting for the church to get right with God? Repentance needs to begin within the church. 1 Peter 4, in closing, 17, says this. For the time has come that judgment must, 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 not maybe, not if you feel like it, but judgment must begin at the house of God. Where's the house of God? Every born-again believer a house. I'm a house of God. So guess where judgment needs to begin this morning? Right here. Right here. Judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, we shall the end of be of them that obey not the gospel of God. It is time for us to become what God intended all along. And what did God intend all along? Be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. Let's stand to our feet this morning. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Be ye holy, for I am holy. Lord, we come to you this morning. Oh, Lord, I come to you this morning. And God, I ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, you're a loving God. You're a merciful God. And God, you cover us in your grace. And I thank you for that, God. But right now, Lord... I'd ask that you peel it all away, Lord, and that we can look down into the depths of our hearts like you do, God, to the innermost part that nobody else sees, God. And God, you will show us, Lord, what you see. We will see ourselves through your eyes, God. And God, yes, we know you love us, God. And we know you've got a plan and a purpose for us, God. But God, right now, the most important thing is that we be holy because, Lord, you are holy. And, God, if you are in our lives, Lord, we must be holy. There's no excuse why we can't be, God. So, Lord, I ask this morning, Lord, that you would show us, Lord. God, that you would convict us, God. Convict us of anything that stands in the way of us being like you, Lord. Lord, we were made in your image, God. So, Lord, help us, God, to lay these things aside, God, Things that don't matter, God. Lord, things that are trivial, God. Things, God, hurt feelings, God, Lord. Lord, any unforgiveness in our lives, God. Lord, anything we've held against our brothers or sisters, God. God, may we lay them down, Lord. May we become real this morning, God. May we hunger and thirst after you, God. May we want you, God, more than anything else, God. May we want to be right with you more than we're right about anything else in the world, God, Lord. Lord, when the church becomes holy, God, then the world, God, has a better chance of becoming holy, God. Lord, let judgment start right here in this house, God, in this vessel, this morning, God. No more games, God. May the truth of God, Lord, come alive in our hearts, God. Oh, Lord, we want truth, God. We speak your truth in our lives, God. But God, may it come forth, God. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord, and I love you, Lord. Lord, Lord, oh, God, I just pray that we will mature, God, that we will hunger and thirst for you, Lord. Lord, if there's any here today that don't know you, God, my prayer is that they will, God, Lord, you'll touch their heart, God. You'll convict their heart, God. God, not condemnation. You don't bring that, Lord. But they'll know, Lord, that there's a knock at that heart's door. 
and it's you, God. Their heart's beating right now so fast they can't stand it, God. They're wondering what's going on, God. There's that lump in their throat they can't swallow down, God. God, let them know it's you, Lord. May your love, Lord, just, just engulf them, God, and give them the courage, Lord, to lift their hand, God, to make that first step, God. Lord, to get their hearts right with you, God, to get their life lined up with you, Lord. We pray that right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, to start on this journey, God, of walking and maturing and becoming more holy, God, because, Lord, you are holy, God, and that's your intention for us all, Lord, is to be holy, God. Oh, Lord, I love you, God. Thank you, God, and I praise your name, God. Lord, I pray that we'll all be serious about this, that this is not something we'll brush aside, God, but this, God, will stay on our hearts, God, that every time we're tempted, God, to get angry, God, to say a bad word about someone, God, to have our feelings hurt, God, we'll know, God, that being holy is more important to us, God, than these things, God, than having, God, our feelings, Lord, just oh help us God help us to grow up God help us to mature God oh Lord I pray that in the name of Jesus God Lord you've got a work for us to do Lord and it's time God that we get about our father's business it's time it's past time but thank God it's not too late it's never too late as long as there's breath in us Lord right now if you are lost if you have never asked Jesus into your heart I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. My husband asked you to raise your hand. If you want Jesus, you need to come on down. Again, if we can't do it in here around church people, we've all been sinners and, and, and we've all been saved by His grace. But if you're lost today, if you've never accepted Jesus into your heart, today is your day. Choose you this day who you will serve. You're serving somebody, friend. You're serving. Each of us are serving somebody. Choose you this day who you will serve. If you need prayer for anything in this house this morning, if you want to seek and be more holy, come, come. These altars are open. Come this morning. Come this morning.